Hello everyone. Welcome back to From Religion to Woohoo. This is your host Angie and it's been a minute since I have put an episode out there. I've been thinking about doing this particular one for about a week now and um, just really haven't felt, I don't know, one, things are super crazy right now for me, but two, I just, like, when I put content out, like, I want to make sure that I release my ego from it and really step into, like, hearing my intuition and from, like, the truth deep within my spirit that's connected with all the universe and it's really hard sometimes when a lot of stuff is going on around you or inside of you to connect with that and trust it and so I've been kind of going through like an up and down slump of trying to reconnect with my truth and my intuition and um, self-love actually. Uh, So Just a quick introduction for those of you that have not been following me. Um, My name is Angie, and I'm the author of a book called Leaf Lessons, When Trauma and Religion Collide, The Process of Spiritual Awakening and Healing. And I encourage you to check that out on Amazon and purchase it. Um, It has uh, my own personal trauma story and healing, and then some insights and understanding I received in my spirit during meditations, uh, visitations from spirit guides, from my dad, who uh, we lost in uh, September 2020, came back and talked to me and shared me a few, with me a few things about the other side, and just really, um, it's kind of eye-opening. Like, I myself, I went back and read my own book, and I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> So I know it was like totally intuitively written through my spirit. Um, I'm really thankful that I was able to be used as that vessel to pour that out into the earth. And I hope that it continues to bless many, many people. Um, I've gotten amazing reviews. And of course, what I have noticed the most is that the religious community um, has come against me pretty hard. They have, you know, really said a lot of hateful things towards me and, um, yeah, it's just been interesting because what I'm finding is the people that are being hateful have not even read my book. (laughs) They assume they know what is written in it. And if you have read my book from front to back, you will know that the entire thing is written in love. And there's a lot of people that are not going to understand that because what happens is what we believe clashes against other things outside of us. So, um, like if, like I write this in my book as well, like we all live in this box and sometimes our box will get expanded and our understanding of the world or our beliefs will be expanded, but we, we can't ever necessarily completely, why we are on the earth, completely break free of these box. Like we're always going to have the understanding of how we ourselves, our human self views the world. And there's always going to be that part of our ego um, programmed into us. But on the other side of it, when you step into your spirit, into your intuition, you are able to continue to expand that small box into a bigger box and a bigger box and a bigger box. And it doesn't mean that you become all knowing or that you, you know, necessarily know more than another person or, but your, your expansion within your own self becomes bigger and, and, and freer in a sense that you don't have to perform and control and manipulate and, and and it's a it's a way to allow your ego to step back a little bit and not have to always protect you. And I'm, you know, halfway through getting my second book written, which is going to be about the ego and my experiences of communicating with my spirit guides and some 
um, insights and understanding I've gotten in my meditations when I've done kind of some travel into the spirit world, I guess you would say. Um, I never know how to say that. Like, it's just a weird, like, in those times, I never expect them to happen. They just kind of come on when I'm meditating. Like, I'll ask for, you know, guidance or I'll ask a question. And then suddenly I'm, like, visiting the moon or, you know, just, like, things like that. But what I found amazing in these uh, meditations is that how much freedom and how much peace and how much love is in this expanded place and we can get there we ourselves as humans can get there we can expand these box boxes we can grow and um i i'm excited to be able to do that myself and i really hope to encourage others to do that which i will just put a little plug in there i am starting a six weeks um manifestation and healing course on August 12th. It is, um, just for six weeks, uh, you can pay bi-weekly, um, and it's only $275 two days, the last day to pay that amount. And then, um, starting tomorrow, it will go up to 333. Um, I have poured myself into this course and it is going to include, um, learning energy, understanding how to clear energy, understanding what manifestation and attraction is, doing some inner child work, releasing some old mindsets and beliefs, setting some b- better healthy boundaries, and just learning to walk out healing into our life. Um, and, you know, this course is not going to completely change your, I mean, it, it will change your life, but it's not going to heal, completely heal you. I think sometimes we we think that Oh, we just heal and then we're done. That's not the case. Like we are constantly expanding and constantly healing, just like I was talking about the box. Um, So if you want to jump in with us, we will be starting that August 12th. You can get on my website, uh, www.leaflessons.org and enroll in the six six weeks course. It's super cheap for what I'm giving right now. And I, it will be going up in the future guarantee because I have spent hours and hours and hours working on this and I'm excited to do it along with everybody in the course so it is going to be fun 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 anyways I um coming back into this expansion and understanding I have been really thinking a lot about um self-love and the importance of it and um you know of course This podcast is called From Religion to Woohoo. And so if you have followed me at all, you know that I used to be very religious. I I went to church for many, many years. I did not actually start going to church until I was 16. Um, I write about that story in my book about how I got involved in the church and how my trauma and and adding on the church's beliefs kind of just amplified my self-destruction self-destructive thoughts and how I viewed myself and really just created lots of self-hate within me, like constantly trying to be better, constantly feeling like I have to live up to a standard, constantly believing that there was something wrong with me. And then on top of that, my trauma and my programmed mind of everything I've been through, I was just like, I couldn't show up. I just, I couldn't show up for myself. I couldn't show up for others. I tried. I tried my hardest. I, I wanted to be the best friend of people. I wanted to be the best work, coworker. I wanted to be, you know, everything I, I tried as hard as I could. I even poured myself into the church setting, teaching Sunday school, doing youth ministry, showing up for all the things, doing women's ministry. You know, I did it all. I even went on mission trips, y'all. I did it. And so I have compassion for those who are in this thinking. And I, my desire is to help people find freedom. It doesn't mean you have to give up your belief in this God or whatever you want to continue to have in your life. But it means that you release the toxic negative attachments and energies and programming that you've created around this source. And one of the things that I have come to understand is that 
you know, there's so many ancient teachings that have been passed down to us in our time. And, you know, just like that game telephone that we use as children to give an example of how one person says one thing and then they pass it to the next and they pass it to the next. And by the time you get to the end, it's not even what the person said. Like it may have like three or four words in the sentence or, you know, you you might say that tree has green leaves on it. And then by the time it gets to the end, it says that tree has a lot of bees on it. You know, like it could be similar, but it could be completely different. And so the interpretations from language to language to culture to culture, to year to year, to the programming to programming is all skewed. And I know people are not going to agree with me, but everything that gets passed down or reset or redone is going to have some kind of flaw based on the human ego and how we assume things, how we view things, how we put things together we have an ego and the ego is always going to be a part of what we do. It is learning to decrease the response of the ego in us to continue to expand our understanding and beliefs of the world around us and ourselves. And that includes the belief of this divine God or source or energy or universe, whatever you want to call it. We have to label it because we can't in our human minds comprehend something as massive as it is so we have to put it in a little box and say this box is god or this box is you know jesus or this box is the universe you know i i don't even know like in our spirit self when in our like truth when we're on that side that we even have the language for it like it's just it just is it's like Jesus often said when he was asked like are you God he didn't say yep I'm God he said according to our translation of course I just said you know it's all passed down but according to a translation he said I am and so if I am is you know on the other side if everything is just it <laughs> basically then the I am is us too we we are the I am's and I really think Jesus was trying to teach us that 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 we can connect with this divine source of love that we can embody this that we can live it out that we can embrace it and so part of that is coming into the understanding of what it means to love yourself you know Jesus taught love yourself or love your neighbor or na- neighbor as you love yourself. So there has to be an aspect of loving self before you're able to expand it out into the world. And because of programming, trauma, life experiences, that self-love becomes distorted and skewed because we place that value in that attachment on the things around us, on our beliefs, on the understanding of the world to be loved by the world when really that love that we're seeking is already inside of us we are we embody that love within our spirit because we are it we are a part of it so as we expand our understanding and our tiny boxes get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger there's always going to be moments and this is in my book too that Things will come up against the box on the outside, maybe on the corners where it's a little bit more sensitive or areas that, you know, could clash against something and it's going to bump up against it and it's going to cause us to react. And that is our ego. That is the ego reacting. And that is the part that we are learning to release. And, you know, I'm writing in my second book about how the egos, what the ego's job is and the ego gets a bad rap. And, but the ego has an important role of protecting. So, and again, I'm not going to share too much because I'm writing an entire book about it. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think what the important message here is to allow yourself to be comfortable enough to be okay with yourself. 
like when we release the negative attachments we have to the world outside of us, to people, to things, to, to what we find our value in outside of ourselves, we come back into our truth. We come back into our own authentic self, our, our intuition, our spirit, whatever you want to call it. It does not matter. And we connect with love. And as we connect with love, that enhances our ability to send that love out into the world. That enhances our ability to have compassion and forgiveness and kindness and understanding and what you would call the fruits of the spirit. So if there is a lack of self-love, you, what usually happens is you become defensive and um, judgmental and you know, as if you need to defend things in your life. And I actually am seeing this happening right now. I mean, I, y'all, this is the first time ever I am going to proudly say before this, I was like, get me out of here. But I am probably going to announce today that I am a Kansas resident. I live in the capital of Kansas and I am so proud of this state today. When I was in religion, I 100% believed that abortion was killing was a murder and i'm not going to argue the fact that it's not or it is however i will argue the fact that there is meant to be freedom and even god gives us free will according to religious teachings so if there is free will and we as america i know there's probably other people that maybe listen in that are not from america but I know they watch America and they see what happens because we're, you know, that's just what happens. Anyways, we are supposed to embody freedom and liberty. And liberty means without the constraints or the control of a system. And it doesn't mean we don't have order or we don't have regulations and we don't have safety pro- protocols. It doesn't mean we don't have those things. It means that we all are given a right to live our best lives the way we can based on how we are able to understand ourselves in the world. So the freedom that comes in loving yourself is you make choices aligned with your highest self. You make choices that are loving and kind towards other people. You are able to embody and live love when you are able to come into the source of love within yourself and release all the attachments to the programs to the systems to how another person like instead of finding your worth and love and feeling that love from another person you embody that yourself and you, it feels, love feels amazing when it comes from somebody else. Yes, absolutely. But there is a negative attachment to that. When you place that, that need, that desire on another human to make you feel that for yourself, it's not possible and you will fail and you will fall on your face and you will feel like shit every time because that love, if they're not fully loving themselves as well, cannot fill your love. And you cannot fill their love. Only you can fill your love. And that's what Jesus was teaching us. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. As you love yourself, you love your neighbor. Be committed to understanding how to connect with your own divine self your own source of love your own energy that is connected to the abundance of the universe the abundance of the source the abundance of god it is inside of you it is inside of me and when i release and when we release those toxic attachments we step into the truth of who we really are Okay, I could probably talk about this for hours, but I'm going to leave it at that because I feel like that's a lot to regurgitate and to chew on. 
and maybe I will expand on a little bit more. But like I said, go ahead and purchase my book. That will help a lot of understanding inside it and for you and then you'll be ready to read my second book because I am referencing my first book quite a bit in my second um but I'm super excited um if you do live in the area I'm in I will be doing a book signing on the 19th um you can find out on my website where that will be I will be doing a um actually y'all I'm gonna go do a readings this um Saturday at a um a psychic fair. I'm so excited. It's going to be like, I've done readings for friends and um, not family. Cause yeah, I've done readings for friends and for people like uh, online or something. Um, but never like actually face to face. So I'm super excited to be able to give this gift to people. And so it will be my first time. I am a little nervous, but I'm more excited. And then in September, I also am going to be doing a whole weekend of readings and um, selling my book. And I will be speaking on a stage um, about my book as well. So I'm super excited. Um, This universe, God, whatever you want to call it, is so amazing. And when you align yourself with that energy, you never know what will come. So I wish you all the love in the entire universe. In the best day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. Namaste.